Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. In today's video, I'm gonna be fishing the transition. So what I've done here, y'all, is I've anchored down along a main channel ledge here on the Tennessee River, and I am right on a transition area. Now what I mean by that is, is there is a change in the bottom composition here from a rocky bottom to a muddy bottom. And these areas are super easy to find on the river because you can spot them with your eyes. You don't need a graph, you don't need a lake map, nothing like that. You can just cruise along the riverbank and see where these transitions are. And what is above water is below water also. So here to my right, and down behind the camera here, there's like a, a bluff wall, lots of rocks, real rock, steep rocky bank. And then up here behind me, it kind of flattens out and it's real muddy. Uh, kind of back here to my right there's like a big mud flat here and so this area right here where I'm anchored down on it goes from a rocky bottom to a muddy bottom and places like that are gold for catfish any type of change like that fish will oftentimes hold on as they make their way up and down river so what I'm hoping to do today is take advantage of that and intercept some fish so what I'm gonna do is cast my baits out for bait today I'm gonna be using fresh skipjack I've got a cooler full of them, so I'll have those cut up in chunks and cast out here in front of me. I would like to suspend fish. That's my favorite way to fish. But uh, today, we've just got a little too much flow out here. We had some rain uh, last few days, and we're supposed to be getting some more rain the next few days. So TVA has really ramped up the flow. It's going to be a little too much for me to suspend fish. So I'll have my baits cast out, and um, we'll put in a few hours out here this evening. It's about 5 p.m. right now. I'm probably going to fish till about 10 o'clock tonight, maybe a little later if the bite's real good. So let me get these baits on here. We'll see what we can hook into today. Here is the first bait, just a skipjack body section. That's kind of the tail portion there. I'm going to sling it out over here to the side, and I'm just going to kind of stagger these baits, kind of fan cast them out. Now the current is going to bring them together here, but We'll still have a decent spread of these baits. And that current's gonna take my scent downstream. So fish that are moving up and down river, or I should say moving up river, they're gonna be able to key in on my baits very easily and come find it. But again, a place like where I'm anchored down on, on those transition areas, I'm hoping some fish kind of hold here and kind of stack up, and they're gonna be right down there in front of my baits when they do. There's the next bait. That is a skipjack body section. I'm going to have three pieces of body section and one head. I basically just took that skipjack, cut it up in four pieces. And that's what we're going to start out with here. Get that out there. Move on to the next rod. Here is my favorite bait in the world, the skipjack head. Send it out there next. The last bait going out. Another skipjack body section. Send it out there. And we're fishing. Oh, look right here, y'all. Look right here at that rod. That's kind of acting like a flathead right there, ain't it? See how that rod tip just kind of got some weight on it. Kind of wiggling. Let's reel down on him. Yeah, there he is. He's kind of acting like a flathead the way it was. It may end up being a just a small dink or something. But it sure acted like a flathead. I'm just watching my rod tips there. And saw that. Didn't feel him. I'm pretty sure it's a flathead. There ain't no rolling down there. Yeah, buddy. Oh my gosh, he let it go. He let it go, folks. Took the bait with him. Took the bait with him. Crap. Here we go. Fish on. Let's pick up on it. That's on the body section. Hopefully this one will stay hooked up here. I lost what I think was a flathead there a few minutes ago on another body section. 
And hopefully we'll land this one, at least get the skunk out. Couldn't really tell how big that other flathead was with the extra current flow out here. You're kind of fighting the fish and the current, so it's kind of a guessing game. That other fish felt pretty good. I mean, I assume it was a flathead. I don't know for sure, obviously. I didn't see it, but this one here is just going to be a little feller. A little dink blue. But it's a skunk buster. Skunk buster, y'all. Let's let him go. See if we can find us one a little bigger, though. There's the next bait. Another section of skipjack. Let's toss it out there see if we can get on it. Oh, man. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good fish. Oh, yeah. Look at that drag peeling. Oh, buddy. That was on that tail section of skipjack. Yeah, the smallest bait we put out, I believe. That's a good fish. Heck yeah, man. This is what I hope to hook into right here. Not, he is swimming to the left right here through my other lines. And I'm hoping I have got him in front of them lines and not in them. He may be in this one up here. I don't know. In fact, he may have two of them. I see them. I see them coming toward me. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, he's a good fish. He's a good one. That's a strong pulling fish right here. Like I said, y'all, these main channel ledges, you get on a brake line on these ledge, I generally get on the deepest brake line right as it starts to come up off the bottom. But some parts of these ledges are just better than others. I mean, yeah, you can catch fish at any point up along these ledges as they transition and go from you know just traveling up and down river but there are certain areas that are just going to hold fish like the spot i'm on here tonight it's kind of that area where you go from a rocky bottom to a muddy bottom you'll find uh you know some kind of piece of cover down there like a tree or rock pile something like that that'll hold fish but you find places like that and you're more apt to hook into some fish from numbers and size. This is going to turn out to be a good fish, but he has made a mess of my lines. You can see up there, he has got wrapped up in these things. Ah, uh, heck with it. I'm just going to go with it. We're going to work on this fish. We'll get everything untangled after the fact. I feel like I could at the risk of losing this fish, let's just go around these lines. There we go. We'll land him on this side. Well, look at that. How lucky did I get right there, y'all? How lucky was that? This come right out of them tangles. Man, this is a good fish. I really ain't felt no rolling. I'm wondering if it ain't a flathead. Ain't no telling gonna be a surprise when we get him up here pretty sure it's a cat though strappers usually make them really hard runs let's get this other camera going there yeah man this fish just going where he wants to go Um, he is strong, man. Man, that's a strong fish. He is right under the kayak. He is just doing his thing, and I'm hanging on. I'm hanging on just enjoying the ride. This is why you fish right here. This is why I fish anyway. I'm always after the big ones. I like getting action. I like catching fish, but the big ones is what 
gets me excited. I've said it before, if I want just sheer numbers of fish, I'll bust out my ultralight rod. I'll go ultralight fishing. Just fish for whatever. But when I'm catfishing, I'm looking for the old Witta hat maker. The oldest, meanest catfish in the river. And this one right here, I don't know if this is the Witta hat maker, but this is one of her kinfolk. Well, I was saying before y'all, these transition areas, easy to spot. I mean, you can just see it with your eyes going down river. You don't need any kind of graph, nothing like that. Just pay attention. Pay attention as you travel along. And you'll see the, the change on the riverbank. I'm feeling this thing now. He's, I don't know what he is. I still don't know what he is. I'm wanting to say it's a blue, but it, it could be a flat. We gotta be getting close to him now. We gotta be getting close. I just wanna get him up here and get a look at him. Oh, he's going back on the other side of the kayak now. Oh, that's a big blue. That's a big old blue. I seen him over there. I'm gonna try to get him back over here on this side of the kayak. We're gonna land him over here since I done went under them other two lines. Oh, come on now. Come on, blue cat. Oh, yeah. There he is. Look at that old ugly thing right there. Oh, yeah. Get him back up here. Well, he is dark. That is a big old dark blue cat. Oh man, what a big blue cat. What a big blue cat. Oh man. That's awesome, buddy. That is awesome right there. Get that hook out of him. <laughs> I mean. It was a battle start to finish. I mean, this is a thick, strong fish. Man, I'm happy to get him. Let me just make sure this camera's running. Yeah, it is. I'm gonna set this one down. Oh, man, look at that thing. <laughs> That's what I was hoping to get out here, y'all. This is what I was hoping to find. We got him. This made my night. I don't care if I get another fish. I'm gonna try to get some more, but I'm happy right here. <laughs> okay, let's put him on the board. Just get a quick length on him for you. And then we'll send him home. That's another one there, over 41 inches. Thick. Man, that's a good fish. I mean, y'all, this fish right here is just dark. Even his belly is dark. Usually they're dark on top and got a white belly, but not this one. <laughs> That's a cool fish, man. He's going to flop on me. Let's let, let's let him go right quick before he goes crazy. See ya, buddy. Man, you were a lot of fun. Uh, he's out of here. <laughs> I love it, man. I absolutely love it. If that don't get your blood pumping, don't take up catfishing. Well, that last fish, I ate a small tail section of that skipjack, so I'm gonna put another on and put it right back in the same place. Oh, here we go, man. I was setting up my light. That rod just took off. It's starting to get a little dark here. Just gonna get my light set up. Well, we can film the action after dark and that one that fish tried to sneak on me sneak attack while i was doing it 
We caught him though, we caught him in the act. Y'all, I've slid down this ledge a little bit, not by choice. Apparently, either that last fish or a pleasure boater knocked me off anchor and I slid forward, so I've transitioned off the transition, I guess you'd say. But I'm still here on this main channel ledge. I'm right on that deepest break line. So we'll still get some fish working up here. If I wasn't such a damn lazy ass, I'd pull anchor and move back upstream a little bit and get right back there on that transition where I wanted to be when I come out here tonight. But I'm probably only gonna fish another hour, hour and a half. So I ain't gonna fool with it. But hopefully we'll still get a few more. We're gonna get this one right here in a second. He's a, yeah, a little dink. Oh, look him down. He's gonna go crazy now. <laughs> He's gonna show out up here. All right, there's that ornery thing right there showing out there at the top of the water. Hopefully you can see him. It's a little dark right now and I ain't got that light set up as what I was doing when he hit. Let's let him go. And now let's get our light set up in case we get another whopper after dark here. Y'all, I've got a fish on this rod right here. I don't know if you can see it in the light, but that rod tip, there it goes. Pick up on me. Yeah. He's on there. I put a skipjack head on this rod a little while ago. I switched my baits out. And then got here right around dark. I want to go ahead and, since I got plenty of bait tonight, put me some fresh skipjack on. And then we hooked up with this one. It's just gotten, gotten good and dark out here right now. Get this one up here, take a look at him. I don't think he's gonna, I don't think he's gonna be no golly whopper. Again, we got so much current right now, it's hard to, it's not so much current that I can't anchor safely in the kayak, but it's enough that it makes it hard to judge the size of fish like I'm normally able to do as I reel them in. Well, these bugs are gonna eat us up now. We in that time of year here. Spring has sprung and skeeters are out everywhere. <laughs> yeah, we got a flathead right there. First one of the night. He ate that skip jerk head. Well, first flathead of the night. Just a little feller. He wanted that skipjack head, and he got it. He just got the, got the hook too. <laughs> Let's send him home. We'll see you later. Woo! We'll splash us on the way out. All right. Well, let's throw that head back out there. Try to get another one. You probably can't tell with the light, but that head there is still in good shape. So. I just switched it out a little while ago, so I'm just going to throw it right back out. Hopefully, one a little bigger than that comes along and finds it. That same rod's going down again. Oh, man. Oh, look at that, buddy. Yeah. I get caught up with him here now. Let me sit back down for this one. Pull on now. <laughs> I just got that bait cast back out just a few minutes ago. I don't know if it's the bait or just the way I've got it positioned out there. Who knows? Nevertheless, we got a fish on it. He's coming right back upstream, man. <laughs> yes. Come right at us here. Oh, that's a striper. That's why he was pulling so dang hard. Now yeah, we've got the mystery solved here. I was like, man, he's making those hard runs, but he don't feel very big. It all makes sense now. Woo! He's still fired up. 
Yeah, here we go, y'all. Here we go. A little strapper. And these things pull so hard. Y'all ain't never caught one of these. You don't know what you're missing. Even these smaller ones like this have just a ton of energy, man. They've just got explosive speed and power. And that one there is, uh, uh, he's giving me the money shot. <laughs> it's that time of spring. They all uh, in that in that mode there, if you will. <laughs> they fun though. Let's let him go. He's ready to get out here. See ya, buddy. Go on now. Oh crap! I didn't have the camera running for the release, but nevertheless, he ate that skipjack head. That flathead ate the skipjack head, and that completes the Tennessee trifecta. That's a blue flathead and a striped bass. That's a good night. All right, guys, it's about 10 p.m., and unfortunately, I got to be up early in the morning, so I'm going to have to get on out of here. Today was a fun trip, though, man. I got that big blue, got several fish, ended up with a Tennessee trifecta with blue flathead striper, and had a good time out here. And, you know, the point I really wanted to emphasize on this video was fishing those transition-type areas where you go from one type of bottom composition to another. Those are kind of just places that fish are going to pause on. If you think about break lines as being the fish highways. Anything that's different along those break lines are like stop signs. Those are where fish are gonna just pause or kind of congregate as they move along those break lines. And so like out here today, at least where I started at, I got pulled off anchor and slid on down a little bit and I was a little bit too lazy out here. I just wasn't feeling it today. I wasn't gonna reel everything in and move back upstream. But I was still on that break line. And so any fish that were making their way up the main river channel here, they were going to find my baits. And I was able to catch a few more out here. But, uh, you know, just like I said, look for those type places. When you're going down river, even if you're not good at reading maps or don't have a graph on your kayak or boat or whatever you're fishing out of, just look for those type of places where you see one different bottom composition to another on the shoreline. It's going to be the same thing out in the water. So anyway, guys, I hope you found the video helpful. I had a good time out here making it tonight. I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.